everything inside me. Forty years he walked them through the desert, this Moses. Forty years. Two generations. Until a nation of slaves who knew how to abide, and perhaps even prosper, under Egyptian slavery, had become a people, hardened by the trials of the wilderness, and eager for prospering in a land of their own, and to live lives of faith. Lives of faith. Not lives of fear. Forty years he walked them through the desert, feeding the manna as they moaned about how wonderful the agriculture of Egypt was, how pleasant the servitude was, how easy it would be to just turn back. Forty years, until the moaning generations were replaced by those who couldn't stand the thought of slavery. Forty-one years they lived under the communist yoke in Czechoslovakia. Forty-one years, two generations, until the people had become a people able to cast off that government and live lives without that government's every totalitarian input in every aspect of their lives. Forty-one years in East Germany, 1949 to 1990. Forty years in Hungary, 1949 to 1989. Forty-two years in Poland, 1947 to 1989. Forty-one years in Romania, 1948 to 1989. 44 years in Bulgaria, 1946 to 1990. 47 years in Yugoslavia, 1945 to 1992. Some places were worse and longer. 74 years in the USSR, 1917 to 1991. 450 years in Indonesia, 1495 to 1945, although now the country has been given another trial. Other places continue that trial. 62 years in Cuba, 1959 to present. 72 years in China, 1949 to present. 73 years in North Korea, 1948 to present. There is no intrinsic limit to how long it goes. The limit is, on how long it is allowed to go. When a backstop exists, it will come to an end, a backstop of people, who refuse to act like a slave any longer, who demand better, Forty years they walked through the desert, until a nation of slaves turned into a nation of people who wanted more, and would strive for that, doing whatever it took to get it. How long will the American people walk through the desert? How long will you walk through the desert? Because your decision to live a free life, is not dependent on anyone else's decision. Are you ready for a better life, or are you eager to continue the childish antics, the self-infantilizing ways of the slave? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In slavery, yes, you labor under another man's command, but you need never worry from whence your daily bread comes. You need never concern yourself with that worry, or with that risk. You need only grumble from time to time, when the bread ration gets too small. The grumble may cause you to risk being whipped. Those are the great risks in life. That you go beg for more crumbs from the table, and might take a whipping. Anyone who has walked a day in the shoes of a free man, knows that the risks of life are much greater than taking a whipping from master. In slavery, you long not for greatness. That's part of the deal. Master protects you from the pitfalls of wanting greatness. He reminds you, yes, once in a while, an entrepreneur succeeds, but oh how they fail, and in such plentiful numbers. 95% of all small businesses go under within 7 years, Master reminds you. Is that the kind of failure you want to return to? Or do you want the riskless existence of working in community, and having your daily bread guaranteed? Master reminds you how good it is to fear risk, how liberating it is to not trouble the mind with the possibilities of risk and reward. You may also have the slave hobbies. Those that feel good and do not edify. The more vile and debasing, the more titillating and corrupting, the more demoralizing and destructive to you, the better it is for master. Be children all your days. Laugh and play like children, only with adult bodies. Bodies that can do adult things. Enjoy your lives. You only live once. Life is short. Try anything once. 
the children and the better it is for master, because children cannot rise up. The demoralized cannot rise up. They have no strength, no fortitude. Demoralization is the process of dispiriting a people by removing morals, customs, ways, traditions. Oh, how good it is for master. You might also trade in slave money, that controlled and debased fiat currency, devised to pay all the bills in the most conniving of ways, that lends itself, not only to the debasing of the currency, but debasing of all aspects of life. Use the slave money child. It comes with no risk to you. At least two generations have known nothing but slave money. Just sit back, and act like a child, for as much of life as you can, is what master wants you to accept. And so many people confuse that with freedom, but at some point, it stops being possible to blame master for your decisions. Maybe at 10 years old, maybe at 15 years old, maybe at 20 years old, you can't blame master or anyone else anymore, by that point, your decisions are on you. By that point, confusion, influence, deceit, oppression, control, words like these carry little weight, when spoken by a person with agency trying to convince others, that he is not to blame for his own choices. Nature abhors a vacuum. It's not your oppressor's fault, that you are so oppressible. It is not the oppressor's fault, that you have so little fortitude to hold the line, to storm the breach, to impose your will, to defend your values. If you do not fill that space as a righteous and steel-spined leader, it will be filled by those who mean to do you harm. Grave harm will befall that person. Children know no better than to be children. What is your excuse? America is headed towards slavery and can barely find a single righteous man who will rise to lead otherwise, the allure of carefree daily bread, the allure of childlike nights and weekends of childlike carefree splendor, and in exchange for mere obedience. This is too great an allure for the man who has been demoralized. And that is why master likes it, when you have no morality, no tradition, no customs. That is why master likes it, when you won't commit. That is why master likes it, when you have no responsibility, when you have no spouse, when you have no children, when you have endless joy and little more. Master wants you to have endless joy. What's so bad about that? If that sound pretty good to you, perhaps you're part of the problem. But the choice is yours. All you need to do is to take a knee. You might love the next 40 years, 400 years, 4000 years. Master will welcome you with open arms, and if you simply commit to never taking that knee, if you simply commit to never being a man's slave, then so much more is possible. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video.